Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Joseph. I hope everyone's doing well today. So, I was requested by a subscriber zine around how to create some animated backgrounds. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I just want to thank everyone for the channel. Again, you guys are all amazing. Um, I'm actually a bit surprised that the menu video has done as well as it has. So again, thank you very much. Um, but let's actually get into it. So... Uh, animated backgrounds. The question was, is can you use Game Maker to import a video to play an animated background of audio? Now, truthfully, I played with this years ago when we had Game Maker 1, a uh, Studio 1, and there was an import function and it was dodgy. Um, but in the newer version, as far as I'm aware and from the reading I've done, Game Maker doesn't have a supported video playback codex. You can buy extensions in Game Maker to do this, but Game Maker is a really powerful tool if you know how to use it because you can basically build your own internalized tools in the program. And what do I mean by that? So I've seen a few search results where people have asked for um, or are searching for animated backgrounds. Now, I hate to break this to you guys, but after five minutes of digging, you can, if you want, set sprites here, which will animate, basically. So if you go sprite, animate, select the sprite there I want to animate, and then you set your tessellation on, animation speed. Um, let me delete that. I need to be in the right object layer. That, in theory, should animate. As you can see. Very poorly, may I add. But, I wouldn't be using that. So normally, when I do something, I build the system myself and I engineer it myself. Um, so I can get the best outcome that I would like. So, I'm going to show you guys what my system is now. Another reason for not using videos um, as animated backgrounds is file size. Um as well. Video files can get quite large. So what I've done is I've done two awesomely shit animations. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So I've got a simple animation of a moving squiggle thing. That is a 32 by 32. And then I've got this um, other one that's a weird 128 by 64. So what did I do to make this animated background? So under my program here I created an object called animated background controller um, and in this controller I embed uh, a selector so this is what I can use to select my background so I can change my background whenever I want to I also then have an array you guys should be familiar with them I use them all the time um, with background one and background two embedded in there and then I've got my background speed set so the idea behind that is that I can use my background selector to reference either of my two backgrounds I want. In my draw function, this is where things get a little... Mm, what's a word? What's a good word for it? Fucky. Let's go with that word. Because I have to embed two for loops inside each other. But I'll get to that and I'll explain what it's doing. Um, our first step though is we set our image speed. This literally took me half an hour to work out how to do because um, it's been so long since I've had to play with image speeds. Um, but basically, under the image speed, I pull my sprite speed set, so that's back in my starting array, and then I just use my selector to select whatever one I'm using, so I select the appropriate speed I want to use for my animation. In saying that, you can actually then set this to be modified dynamically as well using another variable, so you can just add another variable to your base there. Um, now, unfortunately, this is a little bit long, so I'll see if I can squeeze as much as I can on screen. Nope, don't do that, Game Maker. Bad Game Maker. I need, I want you there, so I can continue to... I really hate how little space Game Maker gives me sometimes. Um, okay, so the first for loop... What's going on there? Oh, I see what I did. Whoops. There we go. I hit the little plus a negative key. So the first for loop looks at I. 
in a four, which is just a throwaway value. Um, I then looks at is I less than room width? And if I is found to be less than room width, I is then added to by the width of the background image. So this is sprite get width. So this will return the width of that image and add it to I until it exceeds the room width. The next step is the height value and it's set to O. You can't use I and I because it, will, it won't it know how to distinguish the two values. So we need to use a different letter. O is the one I um, default to because it's next to I. And then I'd go to P, then I'd go to A. So I'll just work down the line on the keyboard. Um, and it does the same function except for height. So basically I'm pulling height and, oh, let's see, let me go all the way over. Like I said, it's a bit painful because this is very long. So if I go all the way over to my program, you'll see again, it just does the same thing. O plus equals sprite, get height, um, var, background sprite, and then background selector. And then in my final step here, what I do is I draw a sprite. My sprite is var background sprite, var, var selector image index so image index means to play animation that's the function we use and then it's zero because i want to start in the corner plus i which is our height and zero plus o oh, sorry zero plus i is our width and zero plus o is our height and by doing this it then creates tessellation so if i run the program let's see what it does hopefully it doesn't break on me it shouldn't so as you can see there, we get this awesomely crap animation, but it's tessellated. I didn't have to do any work. The program handled it all. Let's say I wanted to change the background. Now you could do this in game as well. I've just not built a feature for it. Um, events. So if I change my selector to one, as an example there, you can see now I get a pulsating background. Let's say I want to speed up my pulsating background because I know it's one in a ray set one. I can then go, I think this will slow it down actually, let's test it. So if I change that speed there, you can see it slows it down. And if I change the speed to here, in theory, it should speed it up. Like so. So like that's a, that's a very simple animated background set but you can see how it works. Um, the other side to this is you can attach MP3s. I'm making an assumption you guys know how to use MP3 stuff. So you basically just run an import to whatever sound effects you want. And then for example, I'm pretty sure it's like sound. And then you just basically go and select your sound function. So you can basically embed it let, um, to play the sound effect that you want at that point. Unfortunately, um, Zine, like I said, the research I've done doesn't allow for video codexes, but you can use code like this to do the same thing. I'll put this up onto the Google Drive for everyone. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone again. You guys are all amazing. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys next time. And if you want to see an expanded thing around this more basic stuff, ask. Um, I'm more than happy to look into it. So uh, just a big thank you, and I'll talk to you guys later.